Cineguac. What's going on? Welcome to Cineguac. Today I'm going to show you three different ways to place text behind objects in your videos. I'll show you how to do each one in order of my favorite to least favorite. Every effect has a different utility, meaning depending on what your clip looks like, you can choose which effect will work best. So let's begin. So the first way to do this is arguably my favorite way. What you want to do is drag your clip to the timeline. And let's just trim this a little bit so that it's not as long. Drag that to the beginning. And once you have your clip on the timeline, as you can see here, I just have a nice little clip that I shot on my iPhone of the Washington Monument. What you want to do is hit Option Click, or if you're on a PC, Alt Click, hold it, and then drag it up one layer and that will duplicate your clip. Or of course you can just hit copy and then paste it. Either way works. Once you have two duplicate clips, highlight the top one and then go over to effects controls and where it says opacity, hit the free draw bezier tool. Now make sure your playhead is all the way at the very first frame when you do this. And we can head over to our preview monitor and zoom in a little bit so that we can see what we're doing a little bit better. And what you want to do is with your free draw busier tool, just trace the exact shape of whatever object it is you want your text to sit behind. So in this case, it's the Washington Monument. And then just close it off. And we can fit this to screen again. And once you've done that, still with your playhead on the very first frame, because the camera is moving a little bit, or if you're using a different clip where your actual object that you're masking around is moving, what you can do is in opacity, under your mask where it says mask path, hit this little track selected mask forward button. And when you do this, it'll automatically create motion tracking keyframes for you. So now if we just sort of scrub through, you'll see that the mask follows the object perfectly. And once you've done that with this layer selected, let's just move this up one layer, making room in between for our title to go. So just move over to your type tool or hit T on the keyboard and type whatever you want, Washington Monument. And of course you can just customize this title to look however you want. I can just speed through this section. And once your title is customized to look the way that you want, you can move it to the approximate part of the frame that you want it to live. And once you're done, grab the text layer and drag it right in between your two video clips. So now it's perfectly sandwiched between our two identical video clips, the top one with the uh, motion tracked mask that we created, and the bottom one is just the original clip. And we can just sort of shorten this title so that it lasts for the exact same duration as our clips. And you'll notice that the moment you drag that title clip in between your two clips, it now sits directly behind the object that we masked out. And you can just sort of move this around, you can animate it however you want, and you'll see that the mask remains in the exact same place. So just to give you a quick example, we can move our playhead to the very beginning, and with our title layer selected, right up here in effects controls, we can set a keyframe for scale, and then move this all the way to the very last frame, and set a keyframe for 130. So now, as you can see, when we play that through, the title moves towards us while still remaining behind the Washington Monument. Now, before we move on, I just wanted to drag another clip onto the timeline and show you just how versatile masking can be. So in this example, all I did is duplicate the video clip just like before and then sandwich my text layer in between. Then on the top layer, I mask the shape of the picture frame as I walk by. Then all you have to do is hit the inverted button so that only the areas that I masked around are see-through, revealing the layers beneath it. In this case, that would be the text layer. And then I set motion tracking keyframes one frame at a time until all the text is completely gone. Now I chose to demonstrate this with a picture frame because it's way easier to mask a straight line than it is the shape of my face for example, but with enough time and patience you can mask around pretty much anything. You can mask the shape of a car driving by, you can mask a person walking by, you name it. You can even use this masking technique to transition seamlessly from one shot to another. 
And of course, I'll do way more tutorials about that. Anyway, moving on. So here is the second way to do pretty much the exact same effect. First thing you want to do is drag your clip to the timeline. And we can just trim the beginning and the end just to shorten it. Move that to the beginning. Let's zoom in here. And what you want to do is hit Option Click, or if you're on a PC, hit Alt Click, and drag the duplicate layer to the layer above it. So now we have two identical clips, one right on top of the other. Next thing you want to do is go to your effects library and look for an effect called Paint Bucket. You'll find that in Video Effects Generate Subfolder and drag the Paint Bucket to the top duplicate layer. And you'll notice the moment you do that, the Washington Monument turns red. Now the reason it does that is because if you go over here to Effects Controls to your Paint Bucket options and click on Fill Point, you'll see that it creates this little button right here in the center which is currently hovered over the Washington Monument. Now this effect, and this is very important, this effect only really works well if the subject that you're trying to mask out has a very clear separation between it and the background. If the colors kind of blend together or it's too overexposed or underexposed, this effect isn't going to work very well. So what you want to do is click on this little button and move this around the screen. And you'll see it basically turns everything of the same color red. In this case, everything that's the blue sky. And then we can move over to our paint bucket controls and go down to tolerance. And we can increase the value of the tolerance until pretty much everything is gone right before it bleeds into the Washington Monument, which is the object we want to mask out. So for me, that's around 128. Once we've done that, we go down to blending mode and drop this little menu and select stencil alpha. And then go up to invert fill and select that. Then we can go back down to our timeline and move the top layer with the paint bucket effect up one layer. Once again, that's just so that we have room to put our title layer. Next thing we want to do is select our type tool or hit T on your keyboard and type in the exact text that you want. And we can pretty much write the exact same thing we did before, Washington Monument. And you can customize the title to look any way that you want. Once again, I can speed through this part. And once you've finished your title and you positioned it in frame exactly where you want it to be, grab the title layer and move it down right sandwiched in between your two video clips. And then we can just adjust the duration so that it lasts for the exact same amount of time. And if you'll notice, the text is now perfectly behind the Washington Monument. It even is kind of sandwiched in between the clouds a little bit. And just like before, we can select our text layer, go up here to effects controls, and set keyframes for the scale. Move this to 130. So now the text will be animated towards us. And who knows, maybe you even like the way that this looks more than the first one, but once again, don't forget, it all depends on what your footage looks like. Now the reason why I'm using a different clip is because there's an extremely high contrast between the background or the light areas and the foreground or the darker areas. As you can see, the windowsill is almost pitch black and the background is almost overexposed and blown out completely white. So only in a case like this will this effect work decently well. So all you have to do is drag your high contrasty clip to the timeline, create a title, let's call it Washington, And let's scale this down so that it will fit perfectly in the window. And just because it's against white, let's actually change the color to something that's a little bit more visible. Let's keep it on brand. And with that text layer selected, let's go back to our effects control panel. And under opacity and blend mode, let's just select darken. Let's just make the text layer match the duration of the clip beneath it. And basically what this does is allows only the light areas of the frame to display the title, while the darker areas hide the title completely. Again, this only works when you're working with a piece of footage that has a really high contrast. Thanks for watching. Glad to see you made it to the end. If something didn't make sense, or if you have any questions about this tutorial, or if you just want to say what a stellar job I did, comment below and I'll do my best to respond. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.